Uh, attendance is important. Uh, you have to remember that attendance is still very, very important. If you don't come for 80%, okay, and above, okay, for any course, you will be barred from the exam. I know you are very smart enough to calculate whether you have reached 80% or not, or less than 80% or not. But then, it's important for you to attend my seven chapters because all seven chapters are equally important for final exam. Okay, just to remind you. Okay, it's okay. So, hopefully, uh, all are listening. Okay, sequence diagram is quite important. As I told you, final exam, you will have three diagrams, most probably. One will be use case. The other two diagrams will be uh, from class diagram. Use uh, what do you call that state chart diagram and sequence diagram. So these three diagrams are equally important. Huh? Either uh, any any two of those diagrams will come out. Okay. So now I put back the slide. I want you to try to uh, what do you call that study the diagram. Okay. Okay, so can anyone explain to me what you understand about sequence diagram? You got learned sequence diagram in any other course before? Or not? You guys got learned sequence diagram before? No. Yes. No. Okay. Okay, fine. So now you have done, now imagine you have done your class diagram. Okay, in your class diagram, you have identified all the classes. Okay, then... Uh, each class you have even uh, studied the behavior. So for each class you draw this, what do you call that, state chart diagram to study the behavior. Yes or no? Done. Okay, now, okay, now your use case diagram. How to go into detail use case diagram? You take each use case, you take each use case from your use case diagram. One use case is one function, right? So you take each use case from your use case diagram. Then try to show in detail. 
Ah, uh, show, specify the requirement. That's why this, you see, this diagram comes under specification. I don't teach you this diagram in chapter 3 because so you do try to study, okay, behavior. Okay, there is a function, for example, let's say, like, like, like in this example, right? Let's say in this example, uh, what do you call that? Find a campaign, okay, or register for a campaign. So let's say register for a campaign is your uh, function. So when register for a campaign, right? How can you register for a campaign? What are the steps involved? What? Okay, what are the classes involved? When you want to register for a campaign, what are the classes involved? How do you register for a campaign? When you try to register for campaign, example, uh, okay, campaign class involved. Okay, advertisement class uh, involved. There are few classes involved when you are trying to register for a campaign. And who is the actor perform this function? In your use case diagram, you have that. Okay, you have who, okay, are the users, okay, perform this particular function. So, in your, what do you call that, in your sequence diagram, right, you will show in detail who are the users, okay, uh, what are the function involved, okay. Uh, of course, in your use case diagram, you have so many functions uh, in one diagram, correct or not. Each function is uh, uh, written as, one use case correct or not so here sequence diagram one use case you can draw one sequence diagram for example if you have, let's say uh, your use case diagram you got five use cases right so you can come up with five sequence diagram for one use case diagram that's how it works again i repeat if let's say in your use case diagram like your module use case diagram you have five use case five use case means five functions you can draw five sequence diagram for five use case in your use case diagram. So meaning one use case diagram with five use cases, you can come up with five sequence diagram. So what you have to do basically, you take one use case from your use case diagram and try to come up with a behavior diagram, which is sequence diagram. For this diagram, what you need to do? You need to identify all the classes involved when you perform that particular function. Then you need to know who is the, who's the actor, uh, who's the actor performing that function. Then how this function works. So the steps. Remember you draw your use case uh, description table. Yeah, basically you will draw the diagram for use case description table. So all the steps uh, must be shown clearly here. One good part of your sequence diagram is, did, did you notice there is a timeline? Can you notice, uh, I mean, can you see the timeline? Are like short, samba, very long. Uh, that is actually the timeline. How long this object will be activated? It will show how long the object stay active. You get what I mean? Uh, that's the main point of sequence diagram. How long the object is active? So here, let's study this diagram. Uh, I haven't explained anything about the diagram. Just example first. Okay, so first is the actor involved in performing the function. Before that, who can tell me what use case is this? Use case means what function is this? I'm drawing this diagram for which function? Anyone? What's the function uh, that I used to draw this uh, use uh, sequence diagram for? Uh, can you see the title? SD? Uh, that's the title. Uh, so that's the function actually this sequence diagram for. So add a new advert to a campaign. So, you are trying to add advertisement to a campaign. Okay, you are trying to add an advertisement to a campaign. So, that's the function. Now, that's the function in your use case diagram. Okay, so now you're going to specify that function. So, when you want to specify, what do you have to do? You have to see what are the classes involved. So, what are the classes involved? Three classes involved. Client, campaign and also advert. Three classes involved when you are performing this function. Okay, now, who is the actor? Who performed this function? There is one actor. What's the actor name? Anyone? Campaign? Campaign manager. Uh, campaign manager performed this function. Okay, now, what first step? What is the first step? Campaign manager will try to get the name from the client. Okay? Then what happened? Next, what happened, class? These are the steps, you know. These are the steps. 
So how long does it take to get the name of the, okay, get the name of the, what do you call that, uh, Edward, okay? How long does it take? Can you see the bar is so short, the bar is so short, meaning it will be done in a very short period of time. So you will get the name of the Edward. Once you get the name of the, wait, uh, let me check whether it's Edward name. Uh, so after you getting the name of the Edward, it will list all the campaigns, uh, all the campaigns. How to list all the campaign? It will make use of a loop, okay, to find all the available campaign for all the, okay, uh, I mean all the available uh, campaign for this particular client, okay. It will try to list all the campaigns, available campaigns for this particular client. So after listing, to do this, it will make use of a loop, okay. After that, what happened? After getting all the campaigns, what is the next one? All the campaigns for each of the campaign, huh? for the e for each of the campaign that you have under this client, you are trying to get all the advertisement details. Okay, you try to get all the advertisement details so you can see which campaign can you add the advertisement. Okay, after that you add the new advertisement. Based on that information, you add the new advertisement. When you add a new advertisement, a new advertisement object is created. So that's why you can see a ah, new advert object. Ah, this is object. Okay, a new object is created. Can you see that? And the bar, this bar, okay, activation or uh, execution bar actually shows that this object is activated or executed. When activated, how long ah, this object stay active? Basically, you are trying to show how long this object stay active. If the bar is long, it will be active for long. If the bar is short, then it will be active. Now, once the bar ended, meaning the object is no more active, deactivated already. Can you understand? Is that clear? So, that's all about sequence diagram. Okay. Um, the main thing that you need to know in a sequence diagram, there is uh, actually for that a request and a response. Every, because you know, an, an object cannot be simply activated. How an object can be activated? There is something that's stimulating uh, the object, okay, activation. So how this is done? You have to send a request, okay. Usually, uh, usually the user will send a request. When the user send a request, what happened? The object will be activated. Then, okay, at the end of the activation, uh, maybe at the end of the activation or in the middle of the activation, it will be replied. Okay, you will get a response. Okay, you will get a response. So that's why you can see the bar within the bar. You see this part. Okay, within the bar, you see you have a request and you have a response. So the other object, which is actually you are activating uh, in order to get the response, okay, will be only active until you get the response. The moment you get the response, uh, that's the end of the object. Okay, that's the end of the object. So here you can see, right? Receive message, okay, and then start of execution, end of execution, execute occurrence, huh? or execution occurrence, meaning the bar is the execution of the occurrence, okay. So that's the lifeline, huh? lifeline of uh, what do you call that, each object, huh? lifeline of each object. Anything else I need to show you here, okay, that's uh, send uh, response and uh, sorry, send request and get response, okay. Okay, what about this one? What is reflexive message? What is reflexive message? Who can explain reflexive message? Have you heard about Okay, do you know what is recursive function? Okay, do you know what is recursive function class? Can anyone explain what is recursive function? Do you know what is unary relationship? I already explained that, right? Unary relationship, got or not? Your course. No, I explained to uh, another course of unity. Do you know what is unis? Ah, yeah, it's a. Uh, what is recursive function then? 
the function calls itself the same thing here reflexive message also same uh, the object okay uh, activate itself okay the object it activate itself so that is actually reflexive message uh, there are some uh, what do you call the situation uh, some situation where this will take place this kind of situation uh, i mean this kind of uh, what do you call that uh, occurrence will take place okay okay let's continue I will give you an example next class. Huh? I will try to give you an example. Ask you to draw a diagram. Then we will uh, discuss the example for recursive. Uh, what do you call that? Message also. We know recursive. Uh, recursive message. Recursive is uh, for functions. Okay, this one done. Okay, can you see why? Okay, sometimes, why sometimes you need to shade the life line? Okay, why you need to uh, shade the execution of the, what do you call that, the bar? The execution bar, what I mean is the execution bar. Uh, why, why sometimes you shade? To sh uh, you shade to show what? The activation. Uh, if you want to show the activation, you can always, when the focus is given to another object, so the current object, you see, uh, here got black and uh, white, right? So when black, meaning this object is currently having the focus, meaning this object is current, currently activate, activated, okay, executing, yeah, executing. So when what happened, when this object try to communicate with another object, like for example, this example, uh, gate campaign details. So what happened, currently this object has no focus. The focus is passed to campaign object. So the activation is still there. The activation is still there. But the focus is not there. So what happened? The focus is given to another object. So the shade is okay on the other object. So that's why you shade to show the focus. You may shade uh, the uh, what uh, what do you call that? The the lifeline bar, okay, or the execution bar bar to show the focus. Where is the focus? So after after done the execution. The focus is written back to client object. Okay, the focus is written back to client object. So now you see the bottom part, client object is shaded. So meaning focus is written back to the client object. So this is another thing that you need to know when you draw sequence diagram. Okay, next. The notes you can read yourself. Huh? I'm uh, explaining directly with the gram. Okay. I will try. Anything? Any question? Anyone has any question? Okay, next. Okay, do you understand now what is uh, the loop? Okay, can you see there's a rectangle with the word loop? Okay, so what is this for? For example, one client may may involve in many campaigns. One client may involve in many campaigns. So you are trying to read the list of campaign under each client. So you know this is not going to be more than one campaign. You have a list of campaign. So how can you read from the first campaign until the last campaign? You use a loop. So, to show that this uh, activity is repeated, uh, this activity is repeated, then you can use a loop to show that from the first until the last, uh, the end of the list, you are reading all the campaigns uh, for each client. So, after reading uh, all the campaign, here another loop, you are reading, okay, for each campaign, what are the current act, uh, what, uh, advertisement, okay, you are trying to read the list of advertisement for each campaign. So every campaign you are trying to read the list of advertisement. So it is not possible without a loop. You need to use a loop to read more than one. Uh, so to repeat reading one by one. Okay. Okay. So here you can see right. I put I equals to one. I less than campaign. Okay. Dot count. I plus plus. So the campaign may be a link list. Maybe an array list. Or vector can be anything. So, it has a list of values, okay. 
so now basically i am reading from the first element until the last element how to know huh? what is the last element so usually like array we use array dot length okay uh, it, it can be like a linked list okay so you can use either length or size or count okay to read until the end of the list so that's what i'm doing then i plus plus the for loop the usual for loop that you use huh? same thing here so any question at this uh, stage here plus so far any question Okay. So next, ah, uh, now. Okay, how to show the interaction? Okay, can you see loop? I put one, ah, uh, comma star. What's the meaning of that? Loop one comma star. That is run to show the interaction relationship, basically one to many. Okay, one to many. So you can also use ah uh, your uh, what do you call that uh, uh, loop within the loop, right? You can actually show the interaction operator, okay, with parameters. So in the parameter here, I use ah uh, I show, okay, for example, the number of campaign, right? The number of campaign is actually one to many, meaning one client, the relationship between the client and the campaign. So one client may have more than one campaign. Each campaign belongs to one and only one client. Same thing goes to this. One uh, campaign may have more than one advertisement. Each advertisement belongs to one and only one campaign. So that's what I'm trying to show with the okay interaction operator with parameter. Can you see that? Okay, that's the next one. Okay, let's look at the last thing that I want to cover today. Ah, uh, give me one minute. Ah, uh, the the extra thing I will cover next class. Okay, give me one minute. There are a lot of things you need to know. Ah, uh, in a sequence diagram, to draw a complete proper sequence diagram correctly, you need to know a lot of things. Okay, okay. Let's look at okay interaction operators. Yeah, this is the last thing I wanted to cover. Okay, you know what is branching? What is branching? Who can tell me? You learn in programming. All this you have learned in programming. I'm very sure. What is branching? Meaning, in your steps, right? Uh, main flow and alternative flow. You remember main flow and alternative flow? Can anyone explain now? Uh, what do you mean by main flow and alternative flow? So you have branches over there, right? Meaning, in the main flow, there is no branch. You are just flowing in one line. But at one stage, ah, uh, when you have like selection, if if ah uh, the the what uh, details are not valid, then what happens? The system will follow another flow. Ah, uh, that is a branch. Okay, because now no more one flow, no more one flow. It's uh, split into two flow. So meaning two branch. Ah, uh, there are there are branches ah uh, at that stage. So same thing here. Okay, when you are showing the steps ah uh, in performing the function. So what happened here? As you can see, when total cost is less than or equals to budget, okay, what happened? But then, if total cost is greater than budget, if total cost are uh, greater than budget, it cannot flow this. Ah, uh, it cannot flow in the same flow. It cannot follow the same step. It will change its step when the total cost is greater than the budget. Ah, uh, maybe error message ah uh, and the advertisement will be not selected. Ah, uh, so that's the branch. So basically, when you have selection, ah, uh, selection, you will show in alternative. Okay, as you can see here, alternative interaction operator to show the branching. Basically, if whatever condition is not met, if it is met, you follow the same flow. If it is not met, it will follow the alternative flow, right? That's why it is known as alternative interaction. Okay, clear? Can understand or not? Okay, let's go back to the meeting. You guys so far can understand how sequence diagram is uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, is is prepared? Okay, now tell me. Uh, anyone uh, answer this uh, whatever question I'm asking to summarize uh, whatever I covered for today. Then I let you go. Okay. Uh, to have we will continue next class. Okay. 
Let me ask a few questions. I would like to hear the answer, okay, from you guys. Okay, uh, sequence diagram is drawn based on what are the diagrams? What are the diagrams uh, you need in order to prepare a sequence diagram? Okay, use, use case. case, very good, very good, use case. Any other diagram? So basically, before you draw the sequence diagram, your use case must be ready. Very good. Okay, one more. Use case enough? What's the other answer? Class diagram. Okay, the other answer is class diagram. Yes, correct. So basically, you need your use case diagram and class diagram. Okay, uh, how many sequence diagram do you draw for your module? How do you determine? Let's say your, your assignment, you have your own module, right? Okay, every group, you have your own module, but you are... You must be very glad, you know, why you don't have to draw use, uh, what sequence diagram. Uh, because uh, the assignment will be very complicated then. You won't have enough time to complete the assignment. So, in the scope, right, we have removed the sequence diagram. Because somehow you will be drawing sequence diagram for the next course that you take. Next semester. If not mistaken, uh, Mr. Lim's course or Mr. Rizwan's course. So, I guess uh, you will also draw a lot of sequence diagram in that course. So, in my course, I removed ready. Really. So, how many, so I noticed some of you have uh, given me the answer. How many, uh, what do you call that? How many sequence diagram do you draw for your module? How do you determine? Who can explain? Okay, check your answer from the chat also. Huh? Okay. Five use case, then five sequence diagram. Very good, very good. You know, in your use case diagram, don't confuse with use case diagram and use case. Huh? Use case diagram is the diagram, the whole diagram. Use case is the number of, uh, uh, what do you call that, the uh, oval shape that you have. Meaning number of functions you have. So, if you have in your use case diagram five use cases, then you have to draw five sequence diagram. Very good. Then you are following whatever I am teaching. Very good. Okay, next. Um, what else I wanted to show? Okay, basically what do you actually explain in uh, sequence diagram? What are you uh, usually, uh, or what do you, uh, what do you call that, uh, present in your sequence diagram or illustrate in your sequence diagram? What do you show in your sequence diagram, to be simple? Anyone? <laughs> Why no answer for this question? What do you show uh, in sequence diagram? Very simple. One use case is one function. One function, you draw one diagram. Correct or not? One use case is one diagram. Okay. Uh, one sequence diagram. What is one use case actually? One use case is actually one function. So, for one function, you draw one diagram. Correct or not? So, what do you show in the uh, sequence diagram? The operations, the functions. Then, use case diagram is already showing all the functions. What? So, each use case, each use case is one function. So, what do you show in your sequence diagram for that one function? Basically, one function, one sequence diagram. So, what do you show in the sequence diagram? How do you explain? Okay, of course, uh, the function, yes, the flow, very good. The steps, uh, the steps. How do you perform the function? When you perform the function, what are the steps? Exactly like your use case description table. So, how do you perform the function? When you perform the function, okay, what are the steps? Okay, when you perform the function, what are the classes involved? What are the classes involved when you are performing that particular function? Okay, when you perform that one function, what are the classes involved? So, you show step by step. That is actually your sequence diagram. Okay, so in your steps, right? Okay, it's just like your programming, how you write the code. So, that's why your sequence diagram is the most important diagram when it comes to programming. So, it has enough detail, uh, specific details for the programmer to write the program. You understand or not? So, it will be clear enough uh, for the programmer to understand, okay, the, the picture, how the, prog uh, the system works. So, easier for him or her to write the program. Okay, clear? So, so far, I just covered like introduction of the sequence diagram. I have a lot more to explain about the sequence diagram. 
I will continue next class. Most probably uh, after your 